Right. So on this particular problem, 1-112, we it says recently Kalani and Lynette took a trip from Vacaville, California to Los Angeles. The graph below represents their trip. So explain what each line segment in the graph represents. So if you take a look at it, it has to do with the distance covered, which means in some instances it's going to take less time. So each one of those is part of the trip going at a specific speed. So you would say each segment represents a section of the trip and the speed at that point. The next part of this question asks about how many miles it is from Vacaville to Los Angeles. Well, if you take a look at where the F is up here, all right, and you look at the Y axis and the fact that it's talking about the distance in miles, it's, it's 400 miles from Vacaville to Los Angeles. So just 400 miles. All right. Part C says, using the graph, sketch a graph that would represent their speed while traveling. Take your time to think this through carefully and be sure to label the axes of your graph. So I just grabbed the table that is in the homework help so we can talk about it and just kind of explain what happens here. If I look at the first hour of my graph above up here, okay, it looks like they're going about three, what is it, about 30 miles per hour, okay? So that's why here you have from hour zero to hour one, it's right in the middle of the 20 and the 40, okay? Then you look at the next part. So from B to C, okay, that's about 250 miles. So they're going about 80 miles an hour. So that's why you see from hours one to four, the 80 miles an hour here, okay? Then from hour four to six, they don't go anywhere. It's like they stopped for lunch or something. So you have it down on the x-axis, all right? And then from hours six to eight, you're going about 40 miles an hour because they cover um, roughly 80 miles. So they're going about 40 miles an hour, which that's right here. And then from eight to 10, from hours eight to 10, they're going roughly, it looks like 25 miles an hour because they cover about 50 miles in those two hours. So they're going about 25. So that's what the each of those little step parts is showing in that particular graph. So that's a good representation of the travel time and the miles covered. All right, moving on. All right, this particular problem just asks us to solve for each equation below for x. So don't forget, you're distributing. You've got to distribute this two to the, the negative two to the two x and to the one. So that's what we're going to start with doing. So 10 minus 4x minus 2 equals 4x minus 8, because you're also distributing the 4 to both terms. All right. The next line is going to just be combining like terms. So 10 minus 2. So we've got 8 minus 4x equals 4x minus 8. All right. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna add 4x to each side. So it's gonna be eight equals eight x minus eight. Then we're gonna add eight. So eight x will equal 16, divide by eight, and x will equal two. Okay, that's part A. Part B, again, you do have to distribute this negative, but remember, and this is a common mistake, you've gotta distribute that negative to everything in the parentheses. So now it's 5 minus 2x plus 3 equals a negative 8 plus 2x, okay? Then you're going to combine like terms. You're going to have 8 minus 2x. And then, let's get that written. I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And so that's going to be 16 equals 4x. Then we're going to divide by 4 and x is gonna equal four. And that is part B. Moving on.
All right, so you'll see that on this particular one, it says the right triangle shown below has a height of 12 centimeters. So you've seen that I've drawn that in and its area is 60 square centimeters. So I've started an equation here and let me get a different color. So here's my equation. All right, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna solve for the base, which is AC. And first I'm gonna go um, multiply by two. I like to get rid of the one half. So multiply by two, so that's gonna be 120 equals 12B, essentially. All right, then I'm gonna divide by 12. So B is gonna equal 10. Well, that's my base, so this is 10, all right? And I can, it also wants to know the length of the hypotenuse, so we can just do the Pythagorean theorem for that. So 12 squared, let's get a different color, 12 squared plus 10 squared equals our hypotenuse of AB squared, okay? So that's 144 plus 100 equals AB squared. So AB is going to equal the square root of 244, okay? And that equals approximately 15.62. All right, now, I also, they want to know the angle. They want to know angle B, the measure of angle B, okay? And that's right here, all right? And based on the fact that we have our 10 centimeters and our 12 centimeters, we can use tangent. So I'm going to use my SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to use my tangent portion of SOHCAHTOA. So it's going to mean the tangent of B equals 10, which is my opposite. See this? Opposite over my adjacent, over 12. But because I'm looking for a measure of uh, angle B, I will now use the inverse, which is second tangent on the calculator. And I will put 10 over 12 into the parentheses and that will equal the measure of angle B. That comes out to about 39.8 degrees. So you could round it to 40 if you wanted to. So we could say either 39.8 degrees or 40 degrees. Notice I put this little M in front of the measure of angle B. That's talking about the measure of the angle. It is important, however, for me to say that this is the answer for the hypotenuse. That I did not point out. And we are moving on. Okay, on this problem, we have the longer leg of a right triangle is three inches more than three times the length of the shorter leg. The area of the triangle is square inches. Find the perimeter of the triangle. All right, first thing we have, we know that we have a shorter leg. So I'm gonna say this is our shorter leg. Then it says the longer leg of a right triangle is three inches more than three times the length of the shorter leg. So we have a three X plus the three inches more. Now they've given us the area of the triangle and it is actually 84 square inches. And we're gonna put that into an equation. So I have 84 equals one half base times height. So we're gonna plug in the other pieces that we have, one half, and we're gonna have our base be three X plus three and our height be X. All right, first thing I like to do is multiply by two so it gets rid of the fraction. So that means I now have 168 equals three X plus three times X. And I'm going to distribute that. So it's gonna be three X squared plus three X and it equals 168. Well, what's happening now is it's turning into a quadratic form of an equation. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 168 from each side. And then we're going to, we could factor it right now, but I don't really want to factor it. I see that it, they're all, all three of these numbers are multiply or divisible by three. So I'm going to divide everything by three. And that gives me a zero, so I'm also dividing zero by three, but that's just zero. So then, then I have x squared plus x minus 56. 
okay, because negative 168 divided by 3 is negative 56. Well, now I'm going to use my little diamond method here, which I've talked about on other videos. And so I'm going to take two numbers that multiply to a times c, which in this case is negative 56, if you can read that, and then b is going to be 1. So two numbers that multiply to negative 56 and add up to 1, that is 8 and negative 7. So that means when I factor this, it's going to be x plus 8 and x minus 7. Now, we have a little problem here because x and this one would be equal to negative 8. Well, that's not going to work because you can't have a negative length. So we're not going to be using x equals negative 8. Okay, it doesn't make sense. But this one is x equals 7. So our x is going to equal 7 over here. Then we're going to plug 7 in to figure out what this side is. Well, that's 21 plus 3, so it's 24. So we have two of our sides. Now, this particular problem asked us specifically to find the perimeter of the triangle. Well, we have to find this side. So we have to find C, essentially. So what we're going to do is do the, the Pythagorean theorem. Let me get a different color. And so we're going to do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals C squared. So 7 squared is 49. 24 squared is 576. Aren't I good with my numbers? You add those two together, it equals 625. And that means C, which is our hypotenuse, equals 25. So we're going to put that up here. Okay. And that is also a Pythagorean triple, which means all three side lengths of the triangle are whole numbers. That is a Pythagorean triple. So now what we're going to do is calculate the final thing that we need to know, which is our perimeter. Our perimeter equals 25 plus 7 plus 24. And that is 56 inches. And there's your final answer for this particular problem. Moving on. Okay, so this is the problem that says, imagine that you're adding water to the beakers shown below, labeled A, B, and C. Sketch a graph for each beaker to show the relationship between the volume of water added and the height of the water in each beaker. Put all three graphs on one set of axes. You may want to use colored pencils to distinguish the graphs. What are the independent and dependent variables? Well, I'm not going to worry about different colors. I'm just going to draw some stuff here. I want to show you before I bring in the table that, again, they give you the answer in the homework help, but I think it's important to be able to understand what the diagram is saying. So I'm going to point out a couple things here first. Um, let me get a pen. All right. I want you to see, so I noticed this marking here. So that means to me, these two are the same length. And this is definitely taller and skinnier and will fill up faster, okay? But I think it's important so that you know that that is longer because this one is shorter. So A will fill up second fastest and B to me will fill up the third fastest. So let's get the, the graph in here so you can see it. Okay. The independent variable is going to be the volume of water added. So that's your independent variable. And your dependent variable, because the height of the liquid depends on the volume of the water, is your, um, the height of liquid is your dependent variable. Okay. Things I want you to see. Remember how I told you I thought that C was going to fill up the fastest? Yes, it's going to fill up the fastest, but it's also the height of the liquid. All right, so there's your height of your liquid. This is a taller, this is definitely a taller container. Um, a and B have similar heights, but the volume, so if you take a look at here, this is a smaller container. A is a smaller, it's much smaller, okay. I don't know that it's much smaller. It's just smaller. So the volume of water added is not going to be as much as B. So you've got A here. And the height of the liquid is looks like it's very similar. So, I mean, there's no marking here to prove it that these are the same. Those, those could be totally different. So I can't make that assumption. But they're pretty close. But you do know that this is wider. 
So it's going to have more volume of water. So I hope that helps. Moving on. All right, 1-17 says sketch a few different equilateral triangles, create multiple representations uh, use an XY table, a graph, and an equation of the function with inputs that are the length of one side of an equilateral triangle and the outputs that are the perimeter. So we've got our little table here, okay? And this, you can also do this on the Desmos activity. It didn't necessarily need to be done on a Desmos activity. Most of the Desmos activities I'm like, um, I actually really like, but this one didn't need to be done. But you do see that I've drawn multiple triangles and uh, captured multiple images based off that activity. So we have our table here and I filled in the values that, that came on the table in the Desmos activity. I have drawn and as I entered the points, they all went into this line here. Uh, this particular equation or a triangle has a perimeter of 18, which I didn't actually add to the table, but we could. So it'd be six units and that would be 18, which just further helps our equation that we're gonna come up with. This is, uh, two on each side, and that means it's going to have a perimeter of six. This was three on each side, and that gives you nine. This was four on each side, and that gives you 12, okay? And then the equation is actually pretty easy to come up with. If you're just, you could just look at the graph and figure it out, but you could also do, you know, a slope. You could calculate slope and figure it out. But basically what happens is with each triangle, it goes up so like at zero, zero, we have nothing. But if we have one triangle right here and it has one side, its perimeter is going to be three. So that's one and three, all right? That means we're going up three each time. So I've got one that is three inches around or three units, I should say. I go to two. Notice I'm ignoring the decimals because I really don't need the decimals. But two goes to six because that means I'm going to have two times three, three times three, and four times three, and five times three. So that means my equation would be y equals three x. We do not have a y intercept of any value at this point because it's at zero. So you could say plus zero, but you don't need to. So this is your equation that helps you come to these. Um, the rules and the multiple representations. So you've got drawings, you've got uh, tables, equations, and graph of the line. Okay, that is 1 17. Okay, on this problem, I just had to bring in a picture with a bag full of letters only because there's no graphics that go with this one. It says, Have you ever wondered why so many equations are written with the variables x and y? Suppose you are reaching into a bag that contains all the letters of the English alphabet and you pull out one letter at random to use as a variable in an equation. What is the probability that you would pull out an X? Well, the probability of getting an X out of the bag would be the fact that we only have one X in our 26 letters, and so it would be one over 26, okay? And then the same thing, well, and then it changes because if you got the X, now what is the probability that you pull out a Y? Well, we've pulled out an X. So now the probability of a Y is one over 25 because we've already pulled out an X. So that answers the probability for both of those. Moving on, and that ends all of the problems for this particular review and preview. And I hope this video helped. We'll see you next time. And if you liked this video, don't forget, subscribe, 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 or at least maybe give me a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. Have a good one.